And we are on. Hello and welcome to Getting Up and Running Quickly with TrackSmart Attendance. I'm Helene Coppell, your TrackSmart Product Manager and one of your presenters for today. Before we get started, we have a few housekeeping notes. If you have any questions during the presentation, enter them into the chat box on the left side of your screen and we will answer as many as possible at the end of the presentation. Should you have sound issues, please be aware that the audio is dependent on the stability of your internet connection. If you have any trouble hearing us, please send a message through chat and we'll help you out. One more thing, we'll also email a link to a recording of this webinar within the next couple of days, so if you miss anything, you'll have another chance to catch it. Now back to the topic at hand. This webinar is specifically tailored to give you a deeper dive into the tool and help you get the most from your TrackSmart attendance experience. The structure of today's presentation will pretty much walk you through the entire app. Here's a brief overview of what we'll be covering. First, we'll go over the simple three steps to getting started. Step one, add your employees. TrackSmart attendance is really easy to use for tracking employee time off so the first thing you'll do is add the employees that need to be tracked. Step two, invite to self-service. Empowering your employees with self-service is a major time saver for you, so it's very important that you and your employees know how to use it. Then step three, that's where you start tracking. Step one and two involve some time setting up, but taking care of those details up front saves you so much more time down the road. The good part is you only have to do it once. In step three, we'll show you how easy it is to take back your time, all with very little effort from your part. Then I'll show you the supervisor and employee views, where you'll learn how your employees use TrackSmart Attendance to get information and handle administrative tasks on their own so they don't need to bug you. After we cover the basics, I'll give you a quick overview of the mobile app to see how employees can take care of things from their smartphone or tablet and we'll take a brief look at some of the advanced features too. You'll also hear what the customer success team does and it ain't just tech support. And then finally, we'll have a Q&A with our customer success coaches. Remember, you can send in your questions at any time through that chat box in the lower left of your screen and we will answer them during the Q&A session. So get ready to say goodbye to attendance headaches and the confusion of tracking accrued time off. You'll never have employee vacation scheduling conflicts again. Here we go. Okay, step one, add your employees. When you first signed up for your free trial, you may have been sent to this Getting Started page. Right in the middle, you'll see Add Employee Profiles, get, which gets you where you need to go. If you have passed the point of getting started, your homepage will be the dashboard. Here you'll see add a new employee from the quick links menu or you can always click employees from the top menu. When you choose employees from the top menu, you'll head to a main directory which lists all your employees in the summary view. You can also just click add an employee from here. As long as you entered your first and last name when you got started, you'll see you're already set up as the first employee and your name is on that list. Otherwise, you'll see a sample employee in there. When you click on a name in the list, you'll head over to the employee's profile where you can fill it out and technically the only required fields are first name and last name. However, to take advantage of employee self-service features, you'll need to add their email address, which employees use to log in and that field is on the contact tab. But I want to stop for a second to let you know that your privacy and your employee's privacy is very important to us. We will never use your employee's email address for marketing purposes or share their information with any other entity or communicate with them directly for any reason other than support as they need. So you'll see you have additional tabs here on the right for a full paperless record keeping solution as well. That's a little bonus to the time in attendance is that you can keep your employee records in here and a lot more information. You can also click on add an the Add an Employee button here to continue adding employees one at a time. 
Here in the Contacts tab is where the email address goes. Again, or I don't know if I said this yet, each employee needs a unique email address in order to use self-service. And if you want supervisors to manage their own employees through self-service, for example, to approve employees' time off requests and timesheets, then they will, be, they will need to be designated as a supervisor and have employees reporting to them. You do that here in the Job Details tab. Just check this Supervisor checkbox. This adds your supervisor to the Supervised By dropdown over here. If you're going to add employees one at a time rather than import them all at once, we recommend setting up your supervisors first so that when you move forward to setting up an employee, the supervisors are already in that dropdown. Okay, so now let's talk about importing your employees, which really saves you a lot of time getting started. To do this, you'd click on Import from the Employees menu on the top. You'll download the Excel template we provide by clicking on that spreadsheet icon. Now this template allows you to upload all your employees in one shot and include a majority of the fields that are in the profile. At the top of many of these columns, you'll see a little red dot, which indicates there's a note for you. You can read it just by hovering your mouse over it you'll get explicit direction on what needs to be put into that field. For example, in payroll status, it has to be either salary, hourly, or commissions. Make sure you match the spelling, otherwise you'll get an error when you try to upload that. So pay attention to those column headers to get your instructions. Technically here, the only fields you need to include on an import are first name, last name, and this time, email address. The email address is that unique identifier which tells us whether this is a new employee or an existing one or maybe an accidental duplicate. By the way, if you've got an employee list anywhere, you can easily just copy and paste that list into this template. Once you've entered all the information you need, save the file somewhere easy to find like on your desktop. You'll need to save it with the exact same file name as you got it when you downloaded it from the website. Make sure it's saved as an XLSX file. Then come back to the Import screen. Now you click on the Browse button to find the file you just saved on your computer. Then, if you're updating profile information for employees that are already in TrackSmart, you would check that Update Existing Employees. With that, any information already listed in that profile for the employee will be overridden by what you're uploading now. Remember, it uses the email address to determine whether this is an existing employee in the system or not. If your email address doesn't match, it's going to just create a new employee record. Next, just click on that Import button and you're done. So that's it for adding employees. See? It's not that hard. Okay, let's head over to self-service. Now that your employees are in the system, it's time to give them, give them the permissions they need to start using employee self-service. Now this is the feature that lets employees submit time off requests, fill out timesheets, update their contact and emergency contact info. They can see who's out and when they're out and get information they need to plan their time off. It also lets your supervisors handle time off requests and timesheet approvals and they can do a few other things that will help them manage their employees. Please note that your free trial gives you full access to every self-service feature available. However, timesheets and supervisor features are only available with certain paid plans after your trial is over. Set up your employees for self-service. Click on self-service permissions from the employees menu at the top. Bear in mind that you can set up each employee with individual permissions one at a time from their profiles. However, the way we're about to show you will let you set up and invite groups of employees all in one shot. We've set up a couple of self-service groups to get you started, Employee All Access and Supervisor All Access, which grants all possible permissions to the employees you assign into this. Only supervisors, those who have that supervisor check mark in their profile, would be able to use the supervisor types of permissions though. So you can use ours or you can create your own groups. Click Add a New Group. 
this window will appear where you can give your group, your new group, a name and description to help you remember what it's for in the future. Then select the permissions you want for the employees who will be in this group. Next, you'll select the employees. Now click Save and Send Invitation. This will send an email to the employees like this. It gives them their login details and lists everything they've been given permission to do. Submit time off requests, complete timesheets, update contact information, view the company calendar and a time off schedule. And they can run a couple of reports. Supervisors can manage their employee requests, whatever you gave them permission to do. It also gives them a link where to log in because employees don't log in at the same place that you do, the TrackSmart Administrator. Employees and supervisors log in at employees.tracksmart.com. They'll also get links in that email to download the employee mobile app, which we'll discuss in more depth later on. Here's a tip, by the way. Give employees permission to view the company calendar. This helps them avoid requesting time off for a day when somebody else is out, especially when it's somebody who will need to cover for them when they're out. So just so you know, the employee will be able to see when somebody else is out with this permission, but the personal details such as the reason for the absence is hidden, for, for, is hidden from them to protect privacy. To edit permissions for a specific employee, click Profiles under the Employee tab to go to their profile. Then go to the Permissions tab on the right. Here you'll see a drop down where you can choose to add the employee to a group or choose custom to pick the individual permission. Notice that if the employee has not been set up as a supervisor, you won't be able to choose those supervisor permissions. Also, if there's no email address in the profile, you won't be able to send the invitation. So the employee won't be able to use self-service without it. If you later need to change permissions for the entire group, you can always just edit the group's permissions. You may want to resend the invitation though so the employees get notification that shows them the new set of permissions they have. You can also handle self-service permissions for each employee one at a time from their profile as we showed you here. But using groups, it's much easier and faster when you're getting started and it's all about getting started quickly. Okay, onward and upward. Let's move to step three where the adventure begins. You've added your employees, you've given them self-service so you can take back your time, and now you can start tracking. Click attendance in the top menu to get to your calendar. There are also plenty of links available in the dashboard to get to the calendar as well. If you want to view just certain types of calendar entries, you can use these filters down here on the bottom left and turn them on and off. For example, you want to see absences only, you'll just uncheck everything else. If you want to view the calendar for just certain individuals, you can filter here on the top left or from that drop down you would select filter by department to display all the employees that are within a specific department. When you hover over an item in the calendar, such as an absence, you can see the details. You don't even have to click the event to see it. Or if you do click on a particular day in the calendar, details for all these items will display in a detail list on the right side of the calendar. To add an absence or other events to the calendar, double click on the specific day, or you can click this icon at the top to create a new entry. To edit an entry, you would just double click directly on it in the calendar. A calendar entry form will pop up. The fields are a bit dynamic depending on the first couple of selections you make. You can select a single employee from the list or all employees. So for an individual, you would select the employee's name from the list first. Then select your absence or event code from the reason field. Next, enter the date or dates this applies to. You'll see the hours field has been pre-filled based on your settings for default hours in a day. 
and whether the employee is full-time or part-time. The app defaults to eight and four hours, but you can change that if, in your preferences if necessary, and we'll show those to you later. Notice if you select a date range, it'll calculate the total hours for you. But if it's a partial day or overlaps a weekend, you'll want to change that number of hours to the correct number you'll need to deduct from their bank. Next, you'd select the time off bank you want to deduct from. There are four time off banks available, PTO, vacation, sick, and personal. I know at our company we just use PTO or paid time off where all time off is tracked together in one lump sum. You also have an option in that drop down list that says do not deduct. If you want to just track that somebody took time off but not deduct it from their time off bank, we'll talk about how those hours get added to the banks later. After that, the approved absence lets you record whether the employee had the time off approved first. This is great for your records in case you need to support an absence-related termination or discipline for someone who just didn't show up without notifying anyone. I don't know if anybody has that situation like uh, might from time to time. Below that, you've got a free text field to add any notes. Here's an example, by the way, of when you would choose all employees. I've added, I've selected all employees for a company holiday on the calendar. And I would get an option to add hours to the timesheets. If, if it's a paid holiday, here we go, sorry, we caught up. If it's a paid holiday and no hours are being deducted from time off banks, you may want to add hours to their timesheet for payroll purposes. You can also add other events which don't track hours, like birthdays, anniversaries, performance reviews, just to name a few. You can go through the list in your account and check it out. If you're wondering what All Employees is as a general, that's when the same, the same event applies to all employees, like when your company's closed or the company holiday and you want it to appear on every employee's calendar that when they log in, and we'll show you the, um, the employee calendar later. Let's head over to the supervisor and employee views. We're going to start out with the supervisor's views. What would I see? Supervisors and employees both log in at employees.tracksmart.com. However, supervisors have a few extras on their dashboard that the other employees don't have. As a supervisor, I can see the employees that are assigned to me and a notification letting me know if I've got time off requests or time sheets waiting for me to review and approve them. I also would have gotten an email notification, by the way, on the time off request. Below that section is an employee summary. This is the same information all employees would have with the, res the employees having the respective permissions because supervisors are employees too. They can see how much time off they've used and rem have remaining in each time off bank, and they can see a summary of hours entered into their timesheet for the week. The buttons on the bottom would get them into the related pages to request time off or fill in their timesheet and get more details. Let me show you what it looks like for an employee who is not a supervisor. Just like the supervisors, they log in at employees.tracksmart.com, the link that was in that email when you invited them to self-service. This is the employee dashboard. See, they only have the employee section with the time off summary for hours available and used and the time worked for hours entered into the timesheets. To create a time off request, the employee can cl click this button here or time off request in the top menu. And you can see here is where they would select a reason for the request, the dates and total hours requested. They can also add a comment if needed. Under that is a message that lets them know that confirmations will go out to them and the account administrator, and they can enter additional email addresses if anyone else needs a copy. 
So immediately when your employee presses Submit Request, both you and the employee get an email notification that looks like this. You can see this summarizes details in the request. That same information is available in the calendar as a pending request or on your time off request page. From there, you can approve or decline with just a click. Your employee also submits timesheets here. They click on timesheets in the top menu. Here the employee has a list of the timesheets for the entire year through the current week. They can change to a previous year from the drop-down menu. The employee can see how many hours they worked, how many hours they took off, what time bank time off was uh, deducted, or if they had time off that week, that'll be included in the timesheet view as well, and whether the timesheet's been approved, what, stat what status it's in, has it been submitted or approved, et cetera. To complete a timesheet, the employee clicks on the pen and paper icon for the week to get to the timesheet detail screen. This can also be reached by clicking detail under the timesheet menu up at the top. He or she enters the hours into each day or the time in and out depending on the settings in your preferences which we'll talk about later. And in this example, they are just putting in the total worked hours for the day. They can enter any notes if needed, comments at, at the bottom, and they can save as they go along. And when they're done for the week, they would certify that the hours they're reporting are truthful and accurate and check that box. They wouldn't be able to submit their timesheet without that checkbox, by the way. And then the timesheet, once they submit it, the timesheet becomes available for you, the administrator, or the supervisors with those permissions to handle, to approve and edit as needed. Again, you have full access to, timesheet, to the timesheet feature during your free trial, but this feature is only included with certain plans. Your employees can also view that company calendar if they've got the permission. It looks just like your calendar, but the private details are hidden, and with this they can see when other employees have requested or approved time off. You can see here in the detail list for that day that another employee has requested time off. This is a proactive measure to give the employee a heads up in case they can't both be off on the same day, and it will save you a lot of headaches and declined requests. Please remember, it's up to you to communicate your business's time off policies to your staff as to who can be off on the same day. Employees can update their contact information and emergency contact information as well under the contact info page. This automatically updates your administrator account so you'll be in sync. Your employees can also run reports on their own absence history if they need to, and that's under the Reports tab. Here's what an, app, an employee's absence report might look like. It summarizes the absences that the employee has taken for the requested time frame. All right, moving right along, we'll head into Mobile App and Advanced Features. Access to the TrackSmart Attendance Employee Mobile App is included with the free trial and all paid plans and available for both iPhone and Android. You can simply search for it in the app stores by entering the word TrackSmart. Our other apps, TrackSmart Scheduling and TrackSmart Time Clock, will also sh show up there, so make sure you choose TrackSmart Attendance with the icon that you see on this screen. Our mobile apps are meant for your employees to do some quick tasks on the go such as updating contact information, submitting a time off request, and completing timesheets. You can see in the, middle sh in the middle shot, next slide, you can see in the middle shot, shot that the app will show you a confirmation message so there's no doubt if important records were received. 
I didn't fully cover every detail about the app because this is supposed to be getting up and running quickly, and I want to keep my word on that quick part. So I've walked you through getting started using the app with all the default settings. But now I want to briefly show you around your preferences, which you get to from the link at the top right. This is where you can set up TrackSmart to better fit your particular tracking needs. Let's say you don't use every absence or event code available, but when you select Reason in that calendar entry form, your drop-down list is a mile long. You can turn some of them off so they don't show up. If your business tracks time off in days instead of hours, you can change that too. Remember in the calendar entry form, I showed you it pre-populated eight hours in a day? You can change that to however many hours you need. There are also work week and overtime settings for your timesheets at the bottom of the list. But let's talk about time off plans now. This determines how your employees accrue or earn time off in their banks. I'm going to walk you through it briefly, but if you need more help, there's a full-length webinar on this topic available in the Help Center. And your customer success coach is also available to walk you through setting yours up as well. On the left in the Preference Center, click on Time Off Plans to arrive to this screen. By default, we've given you a sample accrual plan in each account. You can edit this plan, delete it, clone it, or you can also create your own time off plan from scratch by clicking this Add New Plan button and as many plans as you need. I'm going to edit the sample one here by clicking on this paper and pen icon. In Plan Name, you can name your plan anything you want. Give it a description to help you differentiate between the plans so that when you're setting up new employees down the road and need to assign them to a plan in their profile, you'll know exactly which plan to assign them. So during this process, you'll be able to assign a group of employees all in one shot when we get to step two. Okay, the sample plan is set for the employee in this example to begin accruing time off from their hire date. If you've got a probationary period before a new hire starts earning time off, you can change that date. You click on Hire Date. In this pop-up window, you can set when an employee starts accru accruing their time off, whether it's the hire date or after a certain period of time. Set it by days, months, or years, and then you click Save when you're done. Next, you can set the accrual schedule or the rate at which your employees earn time off. Our sample plan, the employee will earn 80 hours of time off yearly every January 1st, meaning that 80 hours is available to use as of January 1st. If your employees earn that time on their anniversary date, then instead of January 1, you would select on the employee's anniversary date. That looks at the employee's hire date in their profile. Or maybe at your business, they earn eight hours monthly and they don't have their full lump sum available at the beginning of the year. You can change these settings to fit how it works at your business. It's very flexible. Click Save to move on. Next, you'll set the date that the new benefit year begins for this level. This can be at the beginning of the calendar year on January 1, the beginning of your business fiscal year, once you pick any date of the year, or an individual's, um, in a, um, an individual employee's anniversary date. If you're unsure what a benefit year is, a customer success coach can help you out, by the way. Next, you can decide whether balances carry over from one benefit year to the next. Yes or no, then click Save. You can also set the maximum balance allowed in the bank, which, which limits or caps the number of hours an employee can accrue before they stop earning more time off. You can leave this at no limit, or you can set the limit to however many hours you need for your business. Click Save when you're done. I'm showing you hours, by the way, but bear in mind that if you have set up your, own preferen your preferences to track by days, that would apply here too. 
You can see below, there's a summary of all the details in this level one of the plan. I have, I've only set one level here by default. Levels are used to allow your plan to change based on how long an employee has worked at your business, and you can make as many levels as you need. For example, let's say an employee earns 80 hours per year when they first start, but after they've been with the company for five years, now they earn 120 hours a year. I would add a new level, and my accrual start date for that level would be higher date plus five years. This way, you've got just one plan that changes based on how long the employee's been there. You don't need separate plans for those people and to figure out how long they've been there. The employee hire date will do that math for you. Now, when would you use a separate plan versus levels? Let's say managers earn time off at a different rate than other employees regardless of how long they've been there. Another example is different banks earn at different rates and intervals. Like your vacation time accrues monthly, but the sick bank gets one lump sum at the beginning of the year. Then you would have different plans for the different banks. When you're done here, click Save and Continue. On to step two here, where you'll get them assigned to employee banks. Column A, you select the employees you want to assign this plan to. Column B, you select the time off banks, which will earn based on the plan you just set up. And in column C, you decide whether this accrual begins now or whether it should do all the math from the date the employee started based on these rules. You've also got a report available to compare what the balances would be with each selection before you move forward. We highly, highly, highly recommend that you keep the current bank balance and begin the accrual today if you're just starting out. If your employees have starting balances that you've been keeping track of in other systems or offline, you'll be able to add the hours into their profile, into their profiles as adjustments to get everybody uh, where they need to be. Again, I'll remind you, we've got a full-length webinar available in the Help Center for this um, time off plan section, and the customer success coaches are happy to walk you through this process. Click Save and Continue when you're satis satisfied you've got it down. Now, step three, review it. There's a summary of everything you just did, which specific employees have received which specific plans, and you can easily go back to each section by clicking on the paper and pen edit icons. Click Save when you're done. Then your time off plan will be set in motion. Keep in mind that these types of accrual plans are only available in the free trial and with power track plans only. All other paid plans provide a very basic time off plan which has a simple setup process but has a lot less details and flexibility on how the employees earn time off. It's all done as a lump sum at the beginning of the benefit year. This brings us to our final portion of today's presentation, and that's to let you know that we're not just interested in supporting you as a customer, we're committed to your success. Our customer success coach is a hybrid between a tech support agent and a time and attendance guru. You'll hear directly from a couple of them in just a few moments when we begin the Q&A session. Whether you've got a question or several questions, can't figure something out, or just need a little help, these guys have your back. As a customer, or potential customer, you have a designated customer success coach at your disposal. Your coach is not just here to answer emails. He's, he or she is ready to speak to you on the phone and walk you through the app, or make suggestions on how to make the best use of your account and take advantage of all those features in a way that fits your business. Even if you've just got a question about managing employee time and attendance, or a related compliance issue, call your customer success coach. He's ready to help. If your coach doesn't know the answer, we also have a full staff of HR and labor law compliance experts working here that you can rely on. By the way, your coaches like to pick up the phone and call you too, and you may hear from one every so often just to check on you. 
you need to speak to your coach, you can call 877-457-4855. You will talk to a human being. No recordings, no press one for this, press two for that. You'll get a human being, talk a customer success coach. You can also email us at support at tracksmart.zendesk.com. We'll be emailing out these contact details too, so don't sweat it if you don't have a pen and paper handy. We'll follow up and send that to you. By the way, if you want to browse through commonly asked questions, you can search topics from a dynamic library 24-7 in our Help Center. Also, here is the TrackSmart member community. It's a forum that's filled with questions and answers and ideas and product suggestions and more from one of our best resources. You guys, the folks that are using TrackSmart apps every day, we encourage you to visit that community and let us know what's working for you or the features or enhancements you don't see that you'd like us to add. If, if you feel there's something that can help you on TrackSmart, let us know. We have a whole idea bank. The majority of the features you see on TrackSmart came directly from our customer suggestions, believe it or not. Well, that's going to do it for getting up and running quickly with TrackSmart attendance. Thanks for letting me share with you. I hope it was helpful. And we're going to head into our Q&A session now. So please send your questions to us through the chat box on the left side of your screen. If we don't get to your question on this live webinar, we will definitely follow up and make sure you get your answer within the next day or two. Remember, we'll be setting out the recording of this presentation over the next few days so you can review this again and again if you wish.